is Mickey. How's everybody doing today? Well, last week I made a video going over the new Lightroom AI landscape masking features. And if you didn't get a chance to see that video, I'll put a link to it in the comments below. But as a result of that video, I got several emails asking basically two different questions. Number one, is there a way that I can select the masking, the landscape masking, and have all these sub masks selected without me having to click on them? And I'm sure Adobe did that because you might not want all of them. You might just want the sky and the water. But in any case, people were asking, I want them all. I want them all pre-checked. I want to move on and start working on my photograph. And we can do that. The next question that people were asking is that, how do I know that Adobe masked everything in the photograph that I have selected? Kind of like this photograph right here. How do I know if I choose landscape and all I see is sky architecture, vegetation, and natural ground, how come I don't have artificial ground? How come I don't have water? How, you know, those are the other features. Well, if it's not in the photograph, if the AI doesn't find it, it doesn't create the mask. Then people are saying, well, I want to make that decision. I don't want Adobe to make that decision. Again, that's easily done by the use of presets. And that is what we're going to go over today. All right, let's get started making our first AI preset. Now, presets are a great tool to speed your work along. It automates several steps that you would have done manually, which creates a good workflow and gets you right into the picture so you can start processing it. The first thing that we need, of course, is a picture that contains all the seven submasks that we find in the AI masking tool. This picture, if you don't have one, I'll put a link uh, for Dropbox so you can download this and use it to help you create your own AI mask preset. Uh, we want to open up our preset window, I mean our uh, masking window over here on the right in the develop module, and we want to choose landscape. It's going to go ahead and find those seven features in this uh, photograph, and you want to select every single one. All right, Whatever ones we select here, it's going to be included in the preset. After we selected them all, we have to create the mask. So as you can see, all seven masks have been created and a bonus which I really like they're all pre-labeled so we know exactly what they are. Once we have the mask created we don't have to do anything in processing we want to come over to the left hand side of the screen and open up presets if it's not already open you can just click on the little down arrow here and click on the plus mark create preset. The first thing that we need to do is give this preset a name and we're going to call this uh, uh, AI landscape masks. All right, the group is where the mask, uh, the preset will be stored. And as you can see, we have different groups here adaptive portrait, adaptive sky. All these are groups. The user presets is the default group that Lightroom wants to store any presets that you create. You can always create your own group and put them in there, but I find just using user presets works really good. We'll also have a new group pop up called Favorites, and this is where we put the presets that we use on a regular basis, and I'll show you how we get to that. So we've called it AI Landscape Masks. We want to come down here and check None, because the only settings that we want to save is masking. So we click on Masking, and these automatically get selected, and we hit Create. When we do that, your preset is created, and you can see it's right under here under User Presets. Now, if we go ahead and reset this picture, we come over here to AI Landscape Masks and click on it. You can see automatically it grabbed Landscape Masking, created the mask, and put it in our uh, Masking Control window. Real easy. See how easy that was? No problems. Now, with that preset we just made, we can make it one of our favorites. By making it a favorite, we make a list of presets we use all the time so we don't have to scroll through all the presets that we might have to try to find one that we just want. To make it a favorite, you want to hover over that preset, right click, and choose Add to Favorites. When it does, when you do that, it automatically creates that favorites category and puts it in here. If there's any other presets that you use all the time, we'll say like uh, this Adaptive Sky Blue Drama, I can click on this add to favorites. Now if I click and open my favorites you can see these are the ones that I want as favorites and that I can use all the time without having to search through the big long list. 
All right, we've created our first AI landscape mask preset. Now let's talk about the second question that people are asking. I want to run my landscape masking and I want to see all the seven sub masks, even if some of the seven don't exist. So to do that, we're going to pull up a picture and we're going to click on our AI landscape mask preset that we just made. And as you can see, it made all seven masks, sky, mountains, architecture, vegetation, water, artificial ground, and natural ground. But some of these have this little triangle with an exclamation mark in it. We have artificial ground, water, and mountains. And what Adobe is telling us is that these types of landscape masking do not exist in this photograph. So that's why you see a dark box with the exclamation mark in the right hand corner. What you can do is clean this up by clicking on the three dots and either saying empty the mountains, which will take out just that one mask, or select delete all empty masks. When we do this, it'll go through the list and find everyone that has no corresponding masking area in it and remove it all at one time. That way it just speeds you along to start working on the masks that do exist in the landscape masking that we just ran. As a side note, this tip that I just showed you to remove those blank masks will come into play anytime you use the AI landscape mask preset. Just as you see in this picture, if we go ahead and hit landscape mask preset, it's going to go and analyze the photograph and create all the seven uh, masks. And as you can see, there's no artificial ground, there's no architecture, and there's no mountains. So it's just real simple. Just double click on the three dots to limp delete all empty masks and the photograph is now ready to be processed by the masks that are valid in the landscape AI preset. All right, so we've completed making our AI landscape uh, mask preset, but there is a way to make an even better preset to help you uh, along with other photographs that have similar qualities. And this is the bonus tip I want to leave with you. We're going to call this the adaptive AI landscape preset. And, you know, when we are using presets, we can create a preset to automate the application of the AI landscape tool. The preset is looking for specific areas to mask, no matter what kind of photograph it is. And because of that, we can make an adaptive AI preset for a common correction or change that we might do to all types of photos. For example, when we're using the AI landscape masking tool, we would like the sky enhanced. Since AI is identifying the sky, we can use this on any photo with the sky. But we can also make some basic sky enhancements in which we can apply to all photos where we use this preset. That is the real magic of creating these presets. Now since the sky enhancement will be applied to all photos where the preset is used, it might not be the exact effect we're looking for, but it's a great starting point from which we can make further enhancements to the photograph using these adaptive presets. So let me show you how to make one of these adaptive presets real quick. It's very, very simple. First, we're gonna start out with that same picture here. We're gonna to go to our masking area. We're gonna choose landscape. We're going to select all these because we're going to make this a preset that's going to handle all the areas that we find in the landscape mask options. And we're going to create the mask. Now that we have our mask created, remember what we said? We're going to make this special just for sky. So we're going to go to the sky mask and we're going to make some changes that we think we could apply to all our other masks that have sky when we use this preset. So I'm going to uh, put the exposure up a little bit bring the highlights down, give a little more whites. Let's just give it just a little touch of blue change, about like this. And let's go to effects, and let's crank up the clarity just a little bit and the texture down just a little bit to bring out those clouds. And also bring out any clouds of any photograph we use this preset on. So these are just very basic changes, and you might tweak them to make it exactly how you would like. All right, now that we have these changes in place, we're going to go over and create this new preset. We're going to click the plus, create preset. We're going to say this is a AI landscape mask, and I'm going to say plus sky. So that lets us know that we're going to be using this as the AI landscape masking, 
but we're going to have an enhancement to the sky. We want to make sure that we uncheck all except masking and we want all the masking. Now any changes that we put in place like we did with tone and effects and color, those will be reflected in this mask and we hit create. And as you can see, we have our AI mask plus sky and when we select another picture and apply this, then you will see the changes to the sky. Uh, but no other changes will be seen in the mask other than the areas being masked. So let's reset this and go to our plus sky mask. And if you hover over it, it will show you that change. You can see just a little bit as I hover over, it does make changes in the sky. And it'll be like that on every photograph we're going to apply it to. We can see the change by the hover. Now you have to give it a few seconds for it to do with the analysis because there's nothing signaling on the screen that it does it, but it is doing it. And once we click on it, it applies all the masks with the changes to the sky. So let's look at another photograph to see how this might be affected. All right, here we are just a picture of tulip fields. It hasn't been processed at all, but let's go over to our landscape masks and choose plus sky. And you can see it does make changes to the sky, it brightens it up. It's kind of a dull sky. Is it the final one that we want to have? No, but it's a good starting point. So let's take it off and on. And if we click, it does make all the applications of the mask. You can see there's no mountains, architecture, artificial ground or water, but it does map out the sky, mask out the sky and make those changes. And I'll look at one more just to show you what the effect could be. All right, here's one last picture. So this is a little water and uh, vegetation and architecture. If we come over and hover over our landscape mask, you can see it makes a great enhancement to the sky. Again, is it where we want to be for the final? No, but it's a good start of making changes to the sky. If I go ahead and click on the preset, you can see that it, it analyzes all parts of the picture. And if we look at our mask, you can see it's the sky, vegetation, water. And if we look at the sky, we can turn it off, on, off, and on. So these are the changes that were built into that landscape preset and makes it just a little easier, a little quicker when we're processing our photos. So as you can see, using presets to automate these AI landscape masks is just a powerful tool to get your workflow going in the right direction. And when you consider you can make an adaptive preset that will you know, affect skies or vegetation or water the same way across all photographs, it's just a great way to add your artistic intent across numerous photos and keep everything very consistent. If anybody has any questions about these presets, how you use them, how you build them, please drop me a line and I'll be glad to help you out any way I can. And I can't wait to see you again.